Hey everyone and welcome to my lecture on equalization. In general, equalization is used to change undesired frequency response of a given system with a desired response. To simply explain this concept, let's consider communication systems where we want to transmit information from one point to another over a channel. The channel itself can add distortion, noise, or echoes to the message which are not desired. So, we can see the channel as a system with undesired frequency response. In this case, we use equalization at the receiver side to compensate the bad effect of the channel and recover the message. In this video, we will dig into the details of equalization and at the end, I will show you an application of equalization in communication systems. Let's say we want to send information from the transmitter to receiver. Ideally, we want to have a direct path between these two. But the thing is, the message or technically the wave can propagate in other directions. Let's say there is a tall building here and on the other side, there is a mountain. So the wave gets reflected by the building and the mountain. This means at the receiver, we get the original message plus echoes which are not desired. Sometimes, there is a direct path between transmitter and receiver and no echoes, but the path is not ideal, or basically it adds distortion to the message, or we can say it treats different frequencies in a different manner. Technically, the echo problem is usually referred to as multipath, and this scenario is usually referred to as a fading channel, as it fades or distorts some frequencies. These are two common examples of non-ideal communication channel with undesired response. To replace undesired with desired response, we need to use equalization at the receiver. Let's see how it works. Here XT is the message which is sent by the transmitter over a communication channel. We can see the channel as a system or basically as a filter. So HT represents the channel. YT is the signal received on the other side. Here is a simple representation of the whole system. This is the transmitter side. This system represents the communication channel and this is on the receiver side. YT is basically XT convolved by HT. If we go to the frequency domain, convolution is replaced by multiplication. XT is the message that we want to send. X omega is the frequency representation of the message. Yt has the same frequency content as x of t if and only if the frequency response of the channel is ideal or flat. This means the frequency response is 1 everywhere. So if h omega is 1, y omega is equal to x omega and we can fully recover the message at the receiver side. Unfortunately, because of the problems that I just mentioned, this flat response is not what we have in practice. Just as an example, let's say this red curve is the frequency response of the channel. Now, here is the beauty of equalization. If we can design a system whose frequency response is like this and use it at the receiver, we can get the flat response. Basically, if you multiply the red curve with the blue one, you will get the green line. This system is called equalizer. Again, the equalization is used to compensate an undesired frequency response and achieve the desired response. In our scenario, the undesired response comes from a non-ideal communication channel. Let's call the equalizer HEQ. Obviously, EQ stands for equalizer. The whole point to use equalization is to recover the original message XT sent by the transmitter. What does this mean? This means if the equalizer works properly, the output should be XT. Now, let's look at this system carefully. The output or XT is the input or YT convolved by the impulse response. Let's travel to the frequency domain. So, convolution is replaced by multiplication. As we showed already, y omega is basically x omega multiplied by h omega. So let's replace it here. x omega 
on the left side is cancelled by x omega on the right. So we get 1 equal to this, which means the frequency response of the equalizer is the inverse of the frequency response of the communication channel. If you understand this simple point, you are done with equalization. So keep this in mind. The frequency response of the channel and equalizer are inverse of each other. This means to design an equalizer, first we need to find the frequency response of the communication channel, then the frequency response for the equalizer is the inverse of h omega. Finally, we need to apply inverse Fourier transform to travel back to the frequency domain and find h eq of t. So these three steps are all you need to design an equalizer. Let's solve an example to practice equalization. The message or xt goes over a communication channel and we get yt at the receiver. The relation between xt and yt is described by this differential equation. Our mission is to design an equalizer which we can use to recover the message. The first step is to find the frequency response of the channel or h omega. As we are interested in the frequency response, we need to travel to the frequency domain. Based on my lecture on Fourier transform tables, when we apply derivative to xt, the Fourier transform is multiplied by j omega. This property is called time domain differentiation. So here is what we get. Let's factor out x omega. Based on my lecture on frequency response, we know y omega divided by x omega is basically h omega, which is 1 plus 5j omega here. To do the equalization, the frequency response of this h eq must be the inverse of the channel. So let's apply the inverse. Now we are interested to find h eq of t. That's why we need to travel back to the time domain using inverse Fourier transform. From table of pairs, we know the Fourier transform of this guy is 1 divided by j omega plus a. To use this pair, let's bring this 5 out. Here's what we get. I'm not doing any magic, these two terms are equal. If you bring 5 inside the parentheses, you will get the exact same thing. Now we can use this pair to go back to the time domain and find h eq of t. In this case, a is 1 fifth. So this is the equalizer in the time domain. Done. To fully understand the concept, let's see a practical application of equalization in communication systems. Let's consider this Cartesian plane where we have real and imaginary parts. And let's assume the signal can be either minus 1 or 1. This is basically a binary message where we have bunch of zeros and ones. 0 in the message is mapped to minus 1 and 1 in the message is mapped to 1. This binary system is very common in wireless communication and it's called BPSK. As we learned in the previous session, XT is modulated and sent over a communication channel. Let's say the channel just adds white Gaussian noise to the modulated signal. White Gaussian noise is basically what you hear when you are trying to tune your radio. Something like this. <laughs> so if there is just small noise after demodulation, instead of having exact minus 1 or 1, the position of each message has been shifted a bit because of the noise. So the messages are scattered around minus 1 or 1. To recover the original messages, one simple approach is to have a boundary. We can say whatever is on the left side was most likely 0 and whatever is on the right was most likely 1. This approach works fine when there is just small noise in the channel. Now let's consider the channel from the previous example plus white Gaussian noise. In this case, after we demodulate the received signal, we get this. As you can see, the received messages are all over the place. Let's zoom in around the origin to see how bad the situation is. At this point, if we use the previous classification approach, we get tons of errors. To avoid this situation, first we need to pass the demodulated signal through the equalizer that we found in the previous example. Here's what we get at the output. At this point, we can safely use our simple classification approach as the dots 
are closely scattered around minus 1 and 1. Done. Okay, that's all I want to say for equalization. Thank you very much for giving me your time and watching this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do it. Also, don't forget to share your feedback and questions with me. It's always nice to hear from you. Thanks again and see you in the next video.